evening, everybody. How's your three-day weekend going, huh? This is me, your boy, Money Flippin' Matt Richards. Hoping you took care of all the nothing you were putting off during the week. It's good to squeeze some nothing in during tough times. And that's a fact. As always, we hope you're keeping an ear to the expert opinions regarding the pandemic. And in most cases, that means staying locked up for now. So, you and your neighbors can keep enjoying life for years to come. Keep a quarantine diary, okay? Start a YouTube channel. Start singing show tunes out the kitchen window, but stay safe because one person can infect a thousand. And we're here with one of those things you can do to take your mind off your isolation. We're firing a diabolical dozen infernal inquiries out into the world. And anybody tapping 12 straight right answers gets in on the $5,000. That's right, 5,000 green and crinklies. That's my new favorite thing to call money. <laughs> oh boy. Will you be in the pool of victors or will your fate be cruel and stricter? But as long as we've got you on here, we also want to tell you about a great charity that we're helping out tonight. NAMI, babies. It's called NAMI, N-A-M-I, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Since 1979, NAMI has been dedicated to building better lives for the millions of Americans affected by mental illness. But under COVID-19, people who were already suffering, suffering from mental illness now face additional challenges. Because NAMI believes there is no health without mental health, they have published a COVID-19 resource and information guide. They host informative webinars and operate a phone line on weekdays to help people get the help they need. So HQ is thanking them by matching tonight's prize money with a $5,000 donation to NAMI. 5,000 green and crinkly is going out to NAMI. Matter of fact, here's their CEO, Dan Gillison, with some words. Take it away, Dan! Hello, HQTs. I'm Dan Gillison, CEO of NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. As the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization, we're working tirelessly to provide the information, guidance, and support so many Americans need during this unprecedented time. More than anything, we want you to know that NAMI is here for you, and you are not alone. If you or someone you know need support, you can find our COVID-19 mental health guide and other resources at NAMI.org. Thanks for all you do, and we wish you all the best. That's right. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, the web address, again, is NAMI.org, N-A-M-I dot O-R-G. There you can find help or give it if you can. NAMI.org. Hey, right before question one, don't forget that tomorrow is HQ Sports Happy Hour. Tune in at 5 p.m. The great Lauren Gambino will be asking the tough sports questions and dropping $5,000 on the winners. So set your notifications and don't miss it. 5 p.m. right here on HQ. It's 5 p.m. Eastern time, just in case you was wondering, okay? Now, who is ready to ride the question coaster around a couple loop-de-loops? The quizzing hour is drawing nigh, so screw on those thinking caps, cut out all your distractions, try to remember what you learned in high school, and let's do this! Question number one. I'm gonna show you how it's done. Shall we do it? Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? I need some, let's see some fire emojis in the chat. Light it up, light it up, baby. Come on, get with it. Give me the fire. Question one, Woo! here we go. Which of these is found on a walrus? Carapace, tusks, or wings? I'm looking for one of these three things that you can find on your average run-of-the-mill walrus. Okie dokie. Lock it in. A carapace is a hard shell. It's more of an insect thing, you feel me? And a full-grown walrus would need some big wings to do any good, <laughs> you know? But walruses without tusks, that would just be, uh, Wilford Brimley. Woo! 78,549 rocking it out on Q1. We're breaking the ice like a walrus with tusks. On to question number two, y'all. Here we go. Where is a gauntlet worn? Hand, chest, or foot? A gauntlet. Where you rocking it, okay? Let's say you go to Bloomingdale's, you pick up a gauntlet, what you putting it on? Do they even sell those there? I don't know, maybe medieval times or like a renaissance gift shop. You probably wouldn't wear it on a leisurely summer stroll, okay? But if you were heading to a joust, you might get a couple sturdy metal gauntlets to protect your hands. 
Look at those! What did the five fingers say to the face? Smack! <laughs> 63,463 got it right. That would hurt. Unity! <laughs> Charlie Murphy, okay. Question number three. Who is honoring Pride Month this June by removing the rainbow imagery from their packaging? M&Ms, Reese's Pieces, or Skittles? Who's it gonna be? All right. Only one rainbow matters during Pride is the sentiment behind this stunt where not only the wrapper, but the candy itself is going plain old gray. And next month is your chance to not taste the rainbow of Skittles. I wonder how gray Skittles taste. What flavor is gray? I don't know. 63,915 got it right. Skittles is the answer I was looking for. I had a cousin that used to say Reese's, Reese's Pieces. I was like, that's, that's, that's not how you say that. Pieces. Question number four. Oh, but before that, if you got dirty hands, check this out. <laughs> Wait a second. My hands feel dirty. Better clean it up. Sanitize a break. Sanitize a break. Give it to me now. Sanitize a break. Get the fingers. Sanitize a break. Uh. So clean. <laughs> Okay, okay, two things. One, she sounded a lot like somebody I know. And two, if you noticed anything wrong at all in that video, let us know in the chat. I'll give you a hint. You're not supposed to give sanitizer to your dog. It's terrible. It's not for the puppies. Q4, knocking on your door. Here we go, babies. Which video game series does not exist? Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong Land, or Donkey Kong Galaxy? What's it gonna be? If you wanna change your mind, you can do it, but then you gotta change it quick! <laughs> Cause if time runs out, you just locked in automatically. Here we go. I don't know the difference between countries and lands, all right, but I think lands are smaller and greener. Cause Donkey Kong Land was the Game Boy series. Only Mario went into space with his own galaxy. 46,489 of y'all got it right. You're blasting off and exploring the space unknown. And that space is question number five. For the children. Here we go. Again, with it. <laughs> Q5. Which of these is an alpine country? Sweden, Monaco, or Denmark? One of these three is an alpine country. This is the show where the more you know gets you the dough. <laughs> All right. Denmark is certainly Nordic, okay? But it's not alpine, all right? And while the Swiss Alps are real, the Swedish Alps aren't. Out of all of these, it's the unique city-state of Monaco. Did y'all know that? Let's see how many of y'all got that right. Oh my gosh, that's a pretty savage question. <laughs> Dang, Monaco is the answer I was looking for. 18,511 got it right. So crazy. Oh, it's a duck. What up, quackers? Gift drop time, babies. Yeah, tap the box and show me what you got. <laughs> Let's see. How you feeling, quackers? You good? You chilling? Yeah, all right then. We're having a good old time here. Look, you matched the background. All right, question number six, babies, let's go. What punctuation mark would work best for a very angry question? Interrobang, Octothorpe, or Tilde? What's it gonna be? Okay, you kids might not even remember the hashtag as a pound sign, let alone its other name, the Octothorpe. But for those of you that picked up on the interrogative part of this word, you might know an interrobang is an exclamation mark plus a question mark. Interrobang 24,845. Got it right. Interrobang. Woo! All right, question number seven. Let's go to work. 
Which nation's domain code is not widely licensed to media and corporations? Tuvalu, Micronesia, or Comoros? Come on. All right. Are you happy with the answer you picked? I hope so. Now I'm gonna find out how many of y'all got this right, okay? This is my favorite part of the game. Every time I get to tell y'all, okay, teeny tiny Tuvalu, try saying that three times fast, Tiny Tiny Tuvalu flips plenty of money with its .tv domain, and Micronesia makes money from radio markets since it uses .fm. But since .com is an early web staple, Comoros ended up with .km instead. 13,499 got it right. Comoros! Yeah! Time to see Nate and check in on him. Question number eight. Hope you're feeling great. Woo! Cheers, baby! You got to hydrate. Nom nom nom. Question eight, here we go. The mascot of the defunct WB network was named for what US state? Connecticut, Florida, or Michigan? Y'all remember the WB network, right? Time for Animaniacs. Okay. Well, is the sort of defunct, sort of merged with UPN to create the CW. This was the Warner Brothers Network, and their mascot was the Looney Tunes frog who sang and danced only when no one was looking. His name? Park up the big screen and watch the WB. Yeah. Michigan J Frog, y'all. I know this because every Saturday I'd get up to watch the WB because they had the Saturday morning cartoons. That's right. 14,384 got it right. Michigan J Frog. Double, 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 WB. Don't sue me, WB. I love Six Flags. Here we go. Question number nine. Which of the biblical magi is most often depicted as dark skinned? Balthazar, Caspar, or Melchior? Who's it gonna be? Talking about the biblical magi, the three wise men. They went to go drop off some gifts at baby Jesus' first birthday party. The Bible itself says nothing about the names, appearances, or even the number of magi. But many nativity depictions follow St. Bede's writings, which put dark skin and a heavy beard on the myrrh bringer, Balthazar. 12,950 got it right. Hello. Come on now. They're like, happy birthday, baby Jesus. I brought you some myrrh. And baby Jesus is like, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> They're like, no, don't let the baby eat the myrrh. Okay, question number 10. <laughs> Who directed a movie that opens with the line, what do we care if we were expelled from college? Victor Fleming, John Ford, or Orson Welles? It looks like It happens, we're live. All right, this is Q10, my friends. We're getting it in. If it's one of the greatest movies of all time, we should remember the first line of dialogue, right? Nah, not always. The Wizard of Oz opens with, she isn't coming yet. And the college line is gone with the wind. Both films by Victor Fleming. 7,835 got it right. We are breezing through this quiz. Two questions remain, so now's the time. If you got a family member still in the game, get your camera ready, because I want to see them freak out. Freak out! Do, 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 do. It's me. It's she. Freak out! Okay, here we go. Q11, all dogs go to heaven. Let's get into it. The mud used to treat Major League Baseballs comes from what U.S. region? Mid-Atlantic, New England, or Southeast? What's it going to be? Baseball mud. Okay, America's most mysterious and alluring mythology may lie in the mud that's rubbed into every Major League Baseball ball. Right? Before I play, it comes from a small family business that collects it in a secret location near the Delaware River in the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh oh my gosh! That's another savage question. 2050, one of you got it right. I see a lot of extra lives getting used right now, but that's what they're there for. You get them so that if this happens, you can stay in the game and go to question 12. Here we go. Come on, baby. $5,000. Sorry, I'm yelling. Turn the volume down on your phone. I'm excited. 
or turn it up. Let's go crazy. It's Saturday night. If you're trying to be quiet, get out of here. Q12, babies, here we go. The last question for all the marbles. The final question of the game this evening. Y'all did it, I'm so proud of you for just getting this far. Here we go. Question 12. What restaurant chain lays claim to the original two patty burger? a and Big Boy, or White Castle? You get this right, I want somebody filming you, I want you to do a backflip, don't, don't hurt yourself. If you know how to do a backflip, do a backflip. Okay. <laughs> Here we go, we say Lay's claim instead of definitely invented because it's not like historians were sitting around at burger joints writing everything down. Who would do that, right? How would they know? Uh, <laughs> but nobody's challenging a common claim that the original double-decker hamburger is the big boy. We have 1,434 winners of HQ Trivia! Whoa, boy! Come on now! Woo! Celebrate! It's a celebration! <laughs> I wish y'all could see this right now. Russ, Russ be over by the computer looking like a DJ. <laughs> I love it. The energy is high here. The prize money is flowing. Look at that. 1,439 winners. All of you, $3.48 richer. Hey, Danzen. Uh, Tomagent, Tukarker, <laughs> uh, CMK, Bada, JG23, Wee Pro, Love Trivia, me too, Adimar, Nikan, Serul, uh, uh, Andy, Andy, what's up, Andy? Hey, everybody, congratulations, y'all did that. I hope we gave you some excitement on a Saturday night. You know, we like doing this so much. You can expect us again tomorrow night at the same time. Four hours after the HQ Sports with Bush Beer Happy Hour game. So set your notifications so that you don't miss either one of them. You feel me? That charity again is NAMI.org. Helping the mentally ill for 40 years. And now, helping them through one of America's toughest times. You can help uh, at the website or get some help if you need it. Check them out. Until next time, y'all. This is Matt Riches, the money flipper, saying, if trees were shorter, giraffes would just be like submarines. It'll, yeah. <laughs>it they only have long necks because the tree you know what i'm saying the trees they got to reach for it that's where they get the prime foliage so if they was, they was only eating from bushes would their neck be like long and to the ground so many questions that's so crazy so many questions <laughs>